Hello everyone, welcome to Moms Clean Air Force, our climate conversation. I'm Heather McTier Tony. so glad you've been able to tap in and join us today. Um, hope you guys are logging in slowly but surely. It is three o'clock and it is election eve, so super, super, super excited. Um, thanks so much for tapping in and joining us. A little bit of a different setup, so we... Um, have these crazy technology challenges and this day of all days we decided to have one but nothing is going to discourage me because guess what it is election eve that's right it's election eve so i'm super 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 excited and uh just giving a few more moments for people to log on live again welcome everybody mom's clean air force here for our climate conversation Super, super excited because today is November 5th, which means tomorrow in less than 24 hours, everybody will have an opportunity to get to the polls if you have not already voted. So first of all, shout out to everybody who has already voted. Thank you so much for making sure that you get out there and that you have already taken uh, your civic duty and your civic responsibility to get out and vote. We greatly, greatly appreciate it and are just glad to have so many amazing, wonderful members that we know are actively involved in this process of um, electing our officials. We know how critically important it is. So. Thank you for everything that you have already done. Welcome, everybody. It's Mom's Clean Air Force here. We're here for our monthly conversation, our climate conversation. Uh, normally, this is on the first Tuesday of every month. However, since we know that tomorrow is a super special day, tomorrow is election day, we decided to do it on election eve. That's right. I'm here to give you your pep talk, your energy, your juice to make sure that you not only get out to vote and I have already had every confidence that you're gonna make sure that you get out to vote but if we can just urge you and push you a little bit more to make sure that you're getting others out to vote check on your friends your neighbors your family members your church members the other mothers at the school where your children go to school um, everybody 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 make sure that you get out to vote uh, because tomorrow is so so important so very very happy that all of you all are coming in I just want to start by saying thank you and welcome to a few folks that I've seen uh, already joining our live feed thanks Trisha it's so good to see you and congratulations on your your um, nuptials this past weekend we're happy 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 to have you um, Shaquilla thank you so much for for joining our live stream um, Bob thanks so much for sharing in uh, and thank you for thanking us for streaming we're really excited to do this type of outreach and to connect with all of our members hey Dee, Dee how's it going I hope everything is going well over there in Texas y'all are holding it down and making sure that everybody is getting out to vote Madeline, it's a pleasure to have you join us. Thanks so much. Uh, and if you have not already checked into our Moms Clean Air Force site, please, please check us out at momscleanairforce.org. You can go to our website and make a plan to vote. And while many of you may already have a plan of action to vote, maybe someone you know does not. And they need to know, you know where to make sure that they're going to vote at the right place. They may need some information um, on uh, who's on the ballot. So um, go to our site, momscleanairforce.vogue, uh, .vogue, .org. <laughs> Make sure you go to our website and uh, check us out. We've got a lot of great information there about voting. Also, um, make sure that you check in at www.vote.org because today we're going to talk about um, being a climate voter, a climate voter. Uh, we all know how uh, there are a number of issues that are happily that, that are happening across our country right now, um, and they are all critical and important to making sure that our policies are protecting our children. Because here at Moms Clean Air Force, we are an organization of over a million moms and dads that are concerned about protecting children's health, making sure that they have clean air to breathe, and making sure that the policies that are established in our country right now today are ones that they can depend upon to have a great future. And so when you go to the polls, make sure that you're thinking through 
are the people who we're putting in office here to make sure that they're protecting our children you know questions that you should ask and asking climate questions and you know you should take just a few moments to think through some of these because as we vote every single year and particularly in our midterms and our presidential elections sometimes we don't get to um, some of the the questions that people have um, about climate about the environment because while there are a number of issues that impact us each and every day and certainly impact um, how how we vote we should always think about you know what's happening in the climate what's happening with my kids because while our children can't vote we can vote on their behalf and we're voting for their future so you know what is a climate voter what is someone who is uh, thinking about the climate and climate action, climate energy? And, you know, is it uh, acting on climate? What exactly is it? So I want to let's let's talk about that for a bit. Um, there are three things that I think you should think about when you're talking about and thinking through a climate voter. And you should think about when you go to the polls tomorrow or if you've already voted. Uh, what you should be expecting from the officials that will be put into office. Um, the first one is climate safety. What is climate safety? Climate safety is really looking at how our towns, our villages, our cities are impacted by extreme weather events each and every year. While climate science, uh, in our opinion, is not something that's up for debate, we actually see the physical manifestations of what's happening with respect to global warming, what's happening um, as we are um, embracing even a new and changing climate every single year. Um, what happens in communities and towns across the, the world is the impacts from natural disasters and extreme weather events. So climate safety is really thinking through how do we protect our homes, our children, our communities that we love in this changing environment, in this changing climate. So this year, with the hurricanes that we saw that devastated uh, communities across the country, uh, the Carolinas got hit repeatedly over and over again, back-to-back -back storms, um, making sure that we think through how can we protect communities and people from natural weather events, uh, extreme weather events, that's thinking climate safety. Uh, and so you'll see that hashtag. In fact, you should use that hashtag, hashtag climate safety, hashtag climate voter. Uh, we have a lot of hashtags. Um, <laughs> that's something that when you see it, it should make you think immediately, is my community safe? If we were to have an extreme weather event and, and think also it's the fact that this is not just a coastal issue right this is not just extreme weather that is impacting florida which we know is very very significant in um, the issues that they've had but they've also you know been talking a lot of um, uh, a lot of climate and we're we're proud of them for that but this is uh, also on the west coast wildfires that are made more and more dangerous and have become more and more prevalent because of climate or tornadoes going through tornado alley uh, i'm actually today in my office in Mississippi tonight, we have um, warnings for extreme thunderstorms and tornadoes. And in our part of the country, that's become more and more significant. Flooding has become more and more significant over the past decade. And these are issues and things that while we cannot control a natural weather event, we can protect our communities by ensuring our elected officials are investing in green and sustainable infrastructure infrastructure. And so that's the question you want to ask your officials. Are you preparing our community, our town, our state, our district for climate safety? Are we in a position that we can weather the storm and we can build back? I love my home. I love my hometown. I love where I live now. My children love it. Um, they're at peace. They enjoy their schools, just like I'm sure so many of you all do. You don't want to think about having to pick up and leave and move somewhere else. Many of you have roots right where you are. And it means something in a community that you've built and you've invested your time and family to. Why should we even begin to think about having to face the dangers of extreme weather when we can do something about it by making sure that we are talking and thinking through climate safety? Uh, so that's something, a term I want you to remember, climate safety. Don't forget it. 
Hashtag climate state safety. Uh, say it with me, climate safety. All right. The next one is climate action. Now, this is something, a hashtag that I'm sure you've all heard or seen, you know, act on climate, cities for climate, climate action now. What does that mean? And when we're talking about being a climate voter and climate action, what does that look like? Well, that looks like you and our cities and our states actually putting sound policy in place that protects our communities for the long run. It's about having policies that make sense and ensure that we're a part of the global climate action that protects our country and our communities from uh, irreversible climate actions. You know, there was a report that came out about a month ago, uh, you may have heard a little bit about it, that talked about um, the extreme weather that we can expect to experience with only a one to two percent increase in global warming um, that is slated to take place a lot faster than we thought it would. And that got a little bit scary for uh, a lot of us. I know it did for me because my son is two years old and before he would be able to drive uh, 16, 18 years, so when we're, we're talking like 12 to 14 years from now, if we don't take some type of action, some type of policy change um, in our, uh, our in our governments today, then we get into a space where it is irreversible, the damage that will be done to our atmosphere. And I mean, really, you know, think about that for a moment. That is every extreme movie that you have ever seen really come into life. Remember that movie, The Day After Tomorrow, where the waves came in over the Statue of Liberty and took out New York? Um, and I can't remember the other name of the movie. If you're watching and you can remember the name of the movie, just put it in the comments and I can see it. But you remember the one, I think it was like Bruce Willis and a couple of other people, they went to break off a meteor or something because uh, it was going to hit the earth and there was going to be all this extreme weather and stuff that happened. You know, um, we've had movies that have been talking about this from uh, Sharknado to all kinds of stuff, to tornadoes, remember Twister when it came out, all of these things that Hollywood has been telling us uh, and frightening us about what would happen with a crazy climate uh, if we don't take care of the environment and take care of the earth. The scary reality is that now scientists have said that this is not a Hollywood movie. This is not something that'll be solved in an hour or two. Uh, and we can leave after the movie is over with and finish watching our popcorn, finish watching the movie and eating our popcorn and go home because the heroes have saved the day. The heroes are us. The heroes in this film is me and you. And our role in this is taking action tomorrow to go to vote and make sure that we're asking the questions we need to ask of um, the candidates to make sure they're protecting us, but also to look for sound policies and pushing our elected officials to ask them the hard questions. Um, what are we doing to ensure that we're not releasing more poisons and toxins into the atmosphere? What policies are we putting in place to make sure that our communities have a sustainability plan? Um, what things are we doing right in our little town to make sure that there is green infrastructure and that we are rebuilding if we need to in a way that is not only sustainable but a way that is efficient and is economically feasible for our communities this is climate action this is what we're doing when we come together and we're voting uh, and we're climate voters to demand climate action so remember, the first thing that I said was climate safety. Uh, the second thing is climate action. So then that brings us to the third thing. What's the third thing? The third thing is what I like to think of is um, climate really protection. Um, it's protecting us from making sure that regulations that are currently uh, um, up for discussion at EPA are not completely rolled back. And that's a huge concern right now. Uh, right now, this administration is looking at rolling back regulations on mercury, the um, one thing that we all know is poisonous to babies. And I talked about this a little bit on the last um, Facebook Live that we had. And even since then, which was last month, uh, 
Um, even within the last month, we have already seen that EPA has pushed this regulation even further. They've already now pushed it to OMB, the Office of Budget and Management, which is the office of the White House that looks and examines regulations to see whether or not they're good for um, the country. It, they make some decisions on it, and it's the next step. So since the last time I've seen you on Facebook Live, um, they've already pushed that forward. So, you know, making sure that we hold people ac accountable, and I guess maybe a, a better thing to say is climate accountability. We talk climate safety, climate action. So that last one, let's, let, I think climate accountability is a better way to say that. Hashtag climate accountability. I like it. Uh, <clears throat> It's making sure that we're holding not only our respect, ourselves responsible, but those that we put in office, we're holding them responsible as well. Because ultimately, while we are the ones that are going to the poll, we're trusting the elected officials that we put in office to make sound decisions that we know are protecting our children. Uh, and it impacts all of us, all of us working together. Uh, I see Josephine, thank you for your many blessings from Oregon. Thank you, we appreciate it. And we're, you know, from, from Mississippi all the way to Oregon, it is critical that we understand how interconnected we are. So yes, while there are elections that are happening here and certainly impact um, the constituency base here in the state of Mississippi, I know that the people we put in office here have a vote on what happens nationally. Um, they have a say in what our climate policy will be. And I'm asking some of those hard questions. I'm asking, um, what is your position on uh, the rollbacks that EPA is doing um, that will put poisons back in the air that harm our children? Um, what's happening? What's going on um, with what are you requiring from EPA? What accountability are you asking and requiring from EPA? Um, what are the climate policies that your state is putting in place? These are critical, critical questions. And it is so important that we understand that this is not just a partisan politic. At Moms Clean Air Force, we're mom partisan. So we're concerned about our children. It, it's not about a R or a D. It's about are you making sound uh, policy that will impact our children. I see a lot of um, comments that are coming in. So uh, I want to address or, or look at some questions. And please type your questions in. I'm going to try my best to get to them. Um, thank you, Karen, who said our health and our, uh, the health of our children is affected by the quality of the air that we breathe. Absolutely. It is so important that we understand that um, and that we understand not only is it affected by the, the air that um, that our kids are breathing, it's not just our kids. It's everything that our kids touch, all five senses, everything that they touch, smell, that they see, um, the, everything that's around them is impacted. So, you know, when they're out there and they're playing football on the football field or they're playing soccer um, when they are in areas where air is clearly um, not they're, they're right by an interstate highway somewhere there's high traffic pollution um, maybe playing on turf that uh, has some toxins that are questionable in it our children are constantly in a space where they're surrounded by things that could potentially harm them and it's our responsibility as parents, as moms, um, that are aware of these issues, that we ask the hard questions. And then that we vote based upon the answers that we get to those questions, and then that we hold people accountable. Now I'm going to make another uh, request to you all. And thank you, Fran. I see that you are from Clean Air and you will vote. Thank you. Yes, Fran. I appreciate that. That's great to see because that's what we need to have happen is we're energized by this. Now, I don't know how many uh, grandmas we have on the, on, on the, um, on our Facebook Live today. If you're a grandma, send me a note and just say, hey, I'm a grandma or I'm a great aunt or uh, <clears throat> I'm in the, the senior, more senior category. You know, our uh, elders uh, are not only important to us culturally, they're really, really important to us to be role models because our elders are out there and they are voting. Um, they, some people have fought for this right to vote. Um, 
they have stood in line they have been through this election process for years and years and years uh, and depending upon where they may be in the country they may have gone through different experiences but you can always find that grandma is gonna vote not only is she gonna vote she's gonna call you about three four five five times to make sure that you go out to vote too why well not only was and are our elders a part of a movement that went through some challenges to make sure that people in our country could vote? Um, they're looking at their children, their grandchildren, and the generations to come to say, what am I doing for them? And, you know, that's a challenge to us all. What are we leaving and what example are we setting for the next generation? There is a saying, you know, that... Um, I don't know if it, it's in your part of the, the world. I know it's in my part of the world that, you know, God looks out for babies and fools. <laughs> and, you know, it's a, it's a saying that basically says, you know, sometimes folks that don't have, um, that, that can't do for themselves, you know, we have to look out for it especially. Well, guess what? It's our responsibility as uh, voters in this, in this um, United States of America, people who have the democratic right to vote, to push to make sure that we exercise it so that we're doing our best to take care uh, and make sure that people who have our best interests at heart and they're looking out for the hard questions, the climate questions that we have, that they're addressing those as well. And so it's very important that we make sure that everybody gets out to go vote and that we're talking through these issues that impact us each and every single day so I'm gonna scroll back and take a second here because I've been talking a lot but I know that there are a lot of people who've also um, been chiming in uh, Christina Stork thank you so much um, about uh, thank you so much for checking in I can't see your your whole comment but it was uh, to speak out about Rockwool building a heavy industrial installation facility I don't know where it is and I can't see everything that you're saying but what I would please ask you to do is shoot me an email uh, tell me about it if you can't see it here and uh, I would love to, to hear about what's going on uh, in your community and I'd say that for everyone you know there's so much that's happening across the U.S., um, particularly with respect to issues of environmental justice, air pollution that we see that's prevalent all over this country. And while there's a lot of good that's happening, um, there's also a, a lot that we need to bring some awareness to. Maybe we don't know everything that's going on, but you can help us to find out and to shed light on that. There's something else that we can do. And this is my personal ask to you. Think about serving. I know, I know, I know what you're going to say. I already know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Heather, not me, not me. You can ask anybody else, but not me. I'm not the one to go and to serve an office. No, 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 no. Listen to me for a second. Just put down what you're doing and just listen to me for a second. Trust me on this. If you can be the PTA president, secretary, vice president, treasurer, if you can organize your church choir, if you can organize a yard sale, if you can do uh, work in your community, you can do and work in public office. And we need you to step up to the plate, you who are listening right now, and be a part of this huge, tremendous movement of people saying, yes, I will serve. That is what is so critical and what's making this election season so beautiful is that there are people from all walks of life, women, moms, who are coming and saying, yes, I will serve. And I didn't say you have to run for president of the United States, but it is so critical for you to look and see if there's an, a board, maybe a board or a commission that's in your community that you can serve on. Because what happens is you bring that voice to the table. You bring the voice of a mother or a concerned aunt or a cousin or someone who is committed to seeing environmental issues be put at the forefront. You bring that to the table. And so I encourage you, don't not think about serving on a board or a commission or think about being a commissioner or running for city council or for mayor or for a state representative. You can do it. 
And this country and this community needs you. We need you. Our children need you. And so that's my personal request, is that you think about, consider, um, really, really being involved uh, and working in this space from a policy perspective, because you can be a part of the team that writes the policy and uh, that can make that change. And so we certainly want to, to see that um, flood continue. So Mary McLaughlin, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your comments. I love to see people that are planting um, trees throughout the country. Certainly um, Columba, I think, is on and joining us today too. She has spent the past week or so planting trees out in her community, out in Arizona. And so things um, that just are helping our communities to do and be better are what we want to see happen all over this country. Uh, and after tomorrow, I have a sneaky feeling that we're going to see more and more of it and people get more and more engaged. Don't get discouraged. And, and I have to say, don't get discouraged. There's been a lot of things that have been discouraging to um, to our nation as a whole, you know. And I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the strong men, women, children, and families of um, Pittsburgh, of, of the um, Tree of Life family, um, the synagogue, uh, of the, the families of the victims of shootings in uh, Kentucky. Uh, our hearts go out to Tallahassee, um, to people that are um, suffering significant harm, as we, we all are, but that have truly um, suffered heartbreak and harm over these past couple of weeks. And the elevation of the vitriol within our country, it's hurtful, it's harmful to all of us, and, and it hurts to see and experience. But still, but still, we are a country of love, and we are a community that uh, has made a a commitment to come together and to do what is right on behalf of our children, uh, of all the children of this nation. Moms Clean Air Force is an organization of over one million moms and dads and grandmas and cousins and aunts and uncles, um, people that want to see the best for our children. We want the best community, um, the best country that we can lead them, and we want to teach and show them that you too can be a part um, and you should be you have an obligation to serve this community uh, and to ensure that we're protecting our environment and it starts with making sure that we all have clean air to breathe and so we all have something to do there is no greater respect than we can show all of those that have suffered um, such significant violence than to make sure that we have already voted or that we are showing up at the polls tomorrow to vote. Come rain, sleet, snow, whatever. Um, that we not only get there, but we get somebody else there. I'll be taking off work tomorrow. I'll be out early in the morning, uh, helping to make sure that people are getting to the polls in my community. I encourage you to do the same in your community and for all of our armchair activists because I am in my armchair in my office today uh, the last things if you're asking you know what can I do and I want to always make sure that I end by giving something that you can do uh, for the next couple of hours until we get to November 6 election day you can pick up your phone go through it call text your family members and friends and say hey did you vote do you have a ride do you have a plan to vote tomorrow what can i help you do even if you're just going through and texting them and sending them a reminder it's helpful because every single vote counts and your children are depending on it i'm looking forward to a great day tomorrow Thanks you all so much for checking in with us and we look forward to uh, seeing you in December for our next uh, Moms Clean Air Force Climate Conversation. And uh, until then, shoot us an email, let us know that you voted and we look forward to hearing and sharing with you again soon. Bye everybody.